you were actually you you were found. Look, a white right. woman found you. Right, I was abandoned in the in the trash. As an See, Jasmine, you're gonna relate to him because she Shut was abandoned. Yes. She was born by a red red tent. I was not abandoned in the trash. <laughs> I was not in a tent. <laughs> she was just. <laughs> Tommy, don't play into it. Just, just go into your story. Go ahead. Go listen. So, so um, <laughs> no, I was abandoned in the trash as an infant. My mother, who found me, was white, and it was random. You know, she had worked with my mother, who gave birth to me in the civil rights movement back in '66. Mm. A year later, came back to kind of look for her. And they said she took her other children um, and left. But she left her youngest child at such and such a house. So my mother went to look because she was nosy. Mm. And she went in there and there was kids doing drugs and and it was an empty house. And when she was leaving, there was a pile of trash on the side. And she said something told her to look under this tire that was like on top of the trash. And she looked and she saw my foot mm. hanging out the trash. So she moved the trash out the way and there I was. She said, I was, everybody thought I was dead. I had cuts in my skull and I had a, a T-shirt on that said in 20 something, I would be president, but mm -hmm. the 20 part was ripped. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't see the, the rest of the number. Mm -hmm. I would be president. And I, I had to go to the hospital for, I think, 90 days. Mm -hmm. And I lived, mm -hmm. the coma, starved. And so she moved me from there to, to Fort Collins, Colorado and Laramie, Wyoming, where I grew up. So I grew up in the Midwest. I didn't know nothing about that, you know? I had great Christmases. I grew up in the mountains and rivers and streams with horses and, I mean, it was just like, hey, my brother and my sister, I thought that, you know, I never thought colors, you know? I thought whatever, whatever we were, we were brown ones. Cause I see a brown dog, a brown mm -hmm. horse, a yeah. brown, you know. So, mm -hmm. so whatever we are, we're brown ones. But when I was a little kid, I said, I don't ever see no brown one around here, but I eventually will. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, they're in jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Colorado. So, so, so we moved to Washington D.C. when I was five, mm. and in '68, right when King got shot. Right. So we moved in during the riots. Mm. So things were burning. People were running down the street. You know, just tanks. Me and my sister and brother were laying on the floor, you know, and we finally moved to, into Trinidad, mm -hmm. Northeast Washington. And, you know, we settled in where we were living and we went to the pool, to the swimming pool. They said there's a pool down there that you go in the summertime. And the black kids kicked our ass all the way home. A whole lot of black kids, too. My brother was 10, my brother was nine. My sister, we're twins, we're, but we ain't because she looked like Cindy Brady. Right. So they, they beat our ass all the way home. They beat us every day, every time we went to the store. They just beat us up, man. It was kicking our ass. And, and they were calling them White Cracker. And they were call, calling me White Cracker Lover. Mm. And so finally I went home, you know, and it was like, hey, you know, these crackers. Why do these ass kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shit. know, no. I actually went home as a kid and I said, "Hey, why do they keep saying I'm a white cracker lover when I like graham crackers?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Which is true. It's graham a kid. It's a kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, graham crackers are easier. You don't need water with them. Yeah, you beat them choked on a white cracker. Right. So, so we moved to the suburbs. It got so bad, and that's the first time I heard the word nigger. And grown men were chasing me home. I was like barely getting in the house. You know, people were throwing things through our windows, shooting through our living room. Mm. It was crazy. It was nigga this, nigga that. I would look up and it would be four or five teenagers running full speed at me. You know, and I barely, barely got away. You know, and I went home to my mother and I was like, and then they kept saying, get the, kill that. So I came to my mom and I was like, who are these Because we need to stay away from them. <laughs> they're going to kill somebody. <laughs> and I was serious, man. Like, and she explained to me that day, she said... What did she say? She said, that's what people, our color call people your color when they don't like them. And I said, well, what color am I? And she said, you're black. And I said, no, I'm brown like the crayon. Because I learned my colors from the crayons. And like everybody did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they were like peach. Right. 
or flesh. Right. Mm-hmm. It was called. You sometimes. had to mix your colors together. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. get me. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm Coco. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I'm brown. You know, and because I thought that animals were the, like us. See, a brown cat could have a white kitten, a black kitten, a speckled kitten, uh, a black kitten, uh, a a horse that a, a gray horse could have a black colt. Right. Because I grew up in the country. Right. Right. So, we moved to a a, a suburb. We moved out to Wheaton, Maryland, mm-hmm. and this was in '69. No, we moved to uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, which was in 70. Same area. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it was more integrated. So there was, you know, sprinklings of black, whites kind of around. And I got that same incident that happened. Some white teenagers were chasing me. They had me cornered. And then some black teenagers came from nowhere. And the white teenagers just ran. And I've been in black ever since. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, then oh I started understanding. Come the way- yeah, yeah, yeah. 